Hi and welcome, Kathleen here. I'm going to show you how to make a couple of variants from the Oils Bavura brush category, the Rag Blender. This is one of my favorite brush categories since 2022. I made a few selections of my favorites and I have also made quite a few variants. This Rag Blender has a really nice soft blend to it. At this point, I have a paper up here that's called Old Cotton Canvas. It slightly picks up the texture. This is a soft alpha blend blender. So if you look over here in the media side at our advanced brush controls, and you come down here to color variability, I noticed that it has an 8% saturation and value variability. So I thought, hmm, I think I'll make this into a brush. So I added some resaturation. Then I can come over here with this brush and I'm gonna add another layer. Notice I always keep my pickup underlying color on unless there is something I need to do that I don't want that bottom color, but rarely is that so. I usually keep this checked. So, as you see, you can make a brush out of this. You can change a subcategory to a grainy soft alpha blend. When you do that, it activates this grain panel. As you can see, this grain panel came up. Same thing as this one. I have my papers open a lot because I switch back and forth to different papers depending on what I'm doing. Should I come down here and I choose window frost out of the watercolor papers, you can see this changes. So I can come over here to the grain if I want some texture in this brush and up that, give it a little bit of a minimum grain. And then you will see that I've got texture. I've got this wonderful pattern beginning to happen that I can use for many different things. So I decided to go ahead and leave the brush like this and save it. And that was my mop brush. So I can change this anytime I want. And then if I don't want any texture in it, I can usually come right up here to the basic paper, uh, drop my contrast and raise my brightness. And then I will still have a nice, soft, flowy brush. Also, if you would like a little bit of U variability, which means that this is the U-ring, so it picks up, depending on how much you add here, it picks up from one side to the next of this and extends out with higher degrees of color. So let's erase this. So let's give this a little bit of U variability so you can see what happens here. Let's bring this up here and it'll choose from both sides. So now you can see what happens when you up that U variability. A lot of times I will keep my brushes at a slight four to five percent. So on top of that, I really like my brushes to have a small end so that I can do little bitty areas and then I can also bear down a little bit and get a larger area of color. And so how you would do that, come to your shape side of your advanced brush controls Go to your size, change your expression to pressure, give yourself a minimum size, and I'm just going to go ahead and stick with the 77.8 large. Once you change your pressure, come here to your brush calibration and start with an S, do a very light touch to a very heavy touch, light touch, heavy touch. And as you do it several times, you will do it at about the speed that you paint. So I usually end up with something just like this. So I'm going to say OK. And then as you can see, 
I will get a very light small stroke to a very heavy stroke. So I call this my KC mop brush. So once you're satisfied with your brushes, go ahead and save them. Come to brushes, save variant. I keep this one in my oils bevere brush category. You hit save. I already have one, so I'm not going to. And then go ahead and come to where you saved it. Right click it and say export variant. When you export variant, you can save it. If it played an important part in that painting, I will save it with those files for that painting. Hit save and then you're back and you've got it backed up so you can use it whenever you need it. So this is the brush I made for painting the clouds in my painting Colorado Autumn. This is an excerpt of painting the sky. I'll put that along there. I know it's a little, it looks, looks a little bit more purple down in here. Yeah, that might be better. Give us something to work our clouds into. And this is deeper down here. I'm going to go ahead and hit that. I could do a little bit darker and more intense. And we come back in with the white, we'll get back up in there in a higher value. This is a pretty high key painting, so our values in too many places aren't going to be way down in here. They're all going to be closer to the top. All right. Um, this type of brush is like uh, using a traditional oil brush. You you don't need to pick it up until it runs out of color or you need to change the color. You, know, you put pressure on your pen to get a heavy, thicker stroke or you can lighten up pressure and get a smaller stroke but it also will blend the pigment while adding a little bit of that color. You can make circles and squares and cross hatches and whatever you need to do. So I decide whatever you need to do to get the desired impression you want for your painting. I'm going to go up here to the reset and take that down and I'm going to do just some blending. And Just pull some of these colors around and give us a little bit more of a textured sky, kind of those puffy clouds. And if you want this color here up into here, then push it up in there because this is a blender. And if you drop the brush opacity a little bit, then you won't see quite as many of the little brush strokes. You can make it a little softer. You can see how you don't see quite as many brush strokes. Now this is dragging my brush around. I didn't mean to grab that white and push it up in there, but I did. Um, so just texture your clouds as you see fit. Whatever you think is working for you and that you like to see. Oops, I'll have to go paint that back in. All right, um, I worked on this sky for quite some time to get what I wanted. And I'm gonna blend this down in here. And I, I, I ended up going back up here and taking my opacity down 
and you can see how soft it makes the little edges. And if you want to save this brush then as a blender, a mop blender, you know, that might help you, you know, going back and forth. Or you can change it on the fly either way. But you see it really, and I'm right now I'm just holding my brush down. I'm not, I'm just moving it around. And you can see figure eights and squares and across and up and down and um, so it's just more of this soft blending that I'm doing. Be careful of those edges. I'll have to come back in and add some color there. But see, as you, you can begin to see the buildup of this clouds. This is how I did this particular sky right here. And just gradually end up with this soft buildup of, of clouds. And if you want to do brush strokes, you know, be my guest. I mean, it's, you certainly can. But when I began to see this, I thought, you know, I can kind of see layers of clouds in there, and I think I'm just going to go with it. And then slowly, and then and as I said, I, I rarely picked up my brush. I just keep moving to different areas and blending as I go. And this is a really light touch just kind of like moving a pen that's laying on my walking pad just slowly around. Maybe I was just scribbling or something. So that's that's what I'm doing. Bring my reset up and I think I'll leave the opacity where it's at and pull that in that that way. I really like this blue color with a hint of green in it. You won't see a whole lot of it. I think I'm going to make this a little bit more intense. Erase what I just did. And put some of that in there. See how this has moved a little more towards the green area. And I, I like that. So. Um, and it's, you can even move it a little bit more, leave it about the same value and add some in here. Let's move it over just a little bit. You see how it gets a little bit lighter, a little greener, but it still stays in the same value. And because we've had a storm come through here. All right, so now I'm going to come back over here. I left it at the same opacity, and I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to take the reset out of it again, and now I'm just going to do some blending. Clouds kind of have an upsweep in them, which I like. Just 
pull that off. And then we're going to come back in here, and this is right over this mountain in here. Let's move this over. Got to put some reset in there. I'm going to move this up here just a little bit more. Come down here, put some of that here. I'm just giving myself some color to work with here when I go back for the blending. And I'm not getting all the way white yet. And I may not get totally white. But I needed this cloud down here at an angle to match the snow angle that went this way. So that because this, this was offset, the cabin was offset so far to the right, it kind of made it look heavy on one side. It's a little above center, but it was still just, mm, I wasn't crazy about the placement or the crop actually. I needed to bring this composition together an angle here to an angle there so that we have our center right here and so you had a movement here and here because I don't have any trees or anything to really dictate that movement and so I needed to add that these clouds here and the snow along here Little wispies. Now I'm going to come back over here to the reset and Blend some of this in here. And I know as you're painting, sometimes, you know, you want to do something a little different. And that's fine, because this is your painting. So, if you, need, if you need to make it different, go ahead. You know, don't feel bad about doing it, because these are our paintings, and each one has a really individual style. Um, we want to make sure and continue that and that you know you don't look like a cookie cutter of someone else still I am just blending lightly I'm not picking my brush up at all and then if you take the this uh, sketch off you can kind of see a little bit better how those edges are working and my brush is fairly large so remember you pull this direction so you don't pull that white in on the edge <clears throat> I 
smooth it right over here just to add a little bit of this blue I think I'll deepen it And back over here, take my reset down and slowly blend some of that in. Just a slight color difference. I want to move that in. And if, if, um, if your touch isn't light enough, you can always go back over here and, and add more uh, opacity to it, or less opacity to it, and it will make it even softer. I have a really light touch, and so not everybody does, so... So now we've got a pretty soft sky happening. Uh, add a little bit of reset. Bring some of that. I'm going to deepen this since it's a higher in the sky. Some of that. And knock my reset back down. See how these clouds kind of swish out. They're going have a movement. Uh, maybe they're beginning to build again. And however, I I don't live where it snows, so I don't <laughs> not quite sure how they all look as they're moving out. So. And. I'll probably have to go along that edge, but we'll see. I'm going to add a little bit more reset. I'm going to tap in there to give myself a little bit of color. I think I'll move it up a little bit more. All right. I'm thinking when I'm doing that. I'm when I'm moving my brush around. I'm not always painting. I'm thinking from one area to the next. How one relates to another. All right. So I think that'll be fine for right now. Let me take some of this dark color here and just bring some of that down here. And take my reset back. All right. So, I think that'll be fine for a little while. I'm, I may do more in here later. And um, I'm going to put some color in there. But I think, I think this will be fine. And I will see you in the next video.